So if you are to consider a Cartesian plan, you are going to see that later on you need to understand the Cartesian very, very much because one, you need to mark the points on the Cartesian plan. You also need to draw straight lines on the Cartesian plan. What is it that you're considering as the Cartesian plan? If you consider what we have here, having the X values and also having the Y values, which are taken from what we refer to as the origin. In this case, the origin where we have got the point uh, zero, zero like that. We can draw any graph on this Cartesian plan using what we refer to as points, points. So in order for you to draw a line, draw any graph, you need to consider the points. So that is our introduction. That is how to mark these points on a Cartesian plan, which shows the values of X and also the values of Y. So how do you mark a point considering that I'm given a point which is called for three? How am I going to label this point on this Cartesian plan? All right, so if you consider your Cartesian plan, the horizontal axis, this one, as we stated, is representing the X values. This is the horizontal. You're talking of the horizontal axis. The horizontal axis. Then also we talk of the Y axis, which is the vertical axis. So the vertical represents the Y axis, the horizontal, the X axis. All right. So it's just like vertical line, a horizontal line. Guys, that, that's the concept. So in actual sense, we are simply talking of what? the x axis the y axis to this side which is to the right side of the x axis these values are positive and to the left side these values will be negative to the x so there we have got negative this side positive values the same thing with the y on the top these values are positive and down here these values are negative so how can we consider a point that is given in order for you to have a point or to mark a point you must consider what is the x value and what is the y value this is what makes or what builds up a point a point is made up of x and the y value so consider what we have point four three you need to know where x is 4, remember x, and it's positive, and y is 3, y is a positive 3 here. So what it simply means is that where these two meet, if you, if you consider from the x here, which is 4, going up, and from this side of 3, you can see that these two, they do meet at a certain point here. Where they meet, that is where you mark the point. So this is the 4 going up, and this is the three going this side. So they meet at this point. Where they meet, you mark a point. So you do not indicate anything at four. You do not indicate anything at three. So it's four going up and the three going to the right. Where they meet, you are going to mark that. So meaning to say, this is our point, our point four, three, where X is four and the Y value is a three. So considering any point that you are given, let's say we are given a minus three and a two like this, it means X is minus three, Y is two. All right, let's consider where X is minus three is this side. So we go up because two is up here, two going this side. As we can see, these two will meet at this point where they meet, that is where you mark a point. Remember we said this one going this side, this one going this side. So they will meet up at this point. You mark that point, that is minus three. The Y value is a two. So that's the point minus three, two. Just like that. So in this case, I want us to consider some of the points that you are given uh, to work with. Consider these points. We are going to mark these points and name them the way that they are given there. All right, so let's have our first point, which is the point A, three, four. So X is three and the Y value there is four. 
So X is three in this case, Y is four up here. So where these two, they meet in this case, the three going up, the four going this side, they meet at this point. Four this side, the three this side, where they meet, that point is the one that you refer to as the point A, which is three, four. Minus two, four for the point B, X is minus two, Y is four. So where X is minus two and Y is a positive four, somewhere there, that is where these two points will meet. Then you mark that point as B. Point C, is minus four, minus five. The X value is at minus four. So you're going the X to the negative, then Y to the minus five, but they will meet at a certain point. Minus four in X and the minus five in Y can meet at this point where they meet going to label that point C. Point D, that is 4 minus 4, where X is 4, Y is minus 4. So you're just going to, at this, where they meet, they're going to meet at this point. Where they meet, you mark a point. That is, X is 4, Y is a minus 4. So that is our point D. Then the point E is 0, 5. So I want us to be careful of this type of a point. That's zero, five. So if you consider in this case, X, Y, X is not given. We like X is as like, we do not have the X value, the X value. There's nothing to talk about. So you consider as if there's nothing there, but there's something that we have. What is it that we have? the y value is at what? At five. So you mark direct at five. So you mark direct at y is equal to five. Direct at that point where y is equal to five since there is nothing to consider for x. So where y is five, it's a positive. This is our y-axis and this is where we have a five. Direct at that point, you mark that point. So this is E. And this point which lies direct on the y-axis or in the y-axis direct there, it is referred to as the y-intercept. That's a special point to note. It's called the y-intercept, which lies on the y-axis. And in this y-axis, x is always equal to a zero. x is always equal to a zero. So let's say the point was given as G. Uh, let's consider also what we have on the point G. The point G is given as zero minus six X Y. There is nothing on X, but there is something that we are given to the Y value. Y is what minus six. So direct at minus six in the in the Y axis. Direct at minus six. You are going to mark that. So it lies direct at that point. So this is going to be our point G at minus six. So if you're given the point, maybe zero minus two direct at minus two in the Y X, it was X, there's nothing there. So you mark direct at minus two. That is where your point will be. So this one was at minus six and that minus six is going to be the Y intercept as I said before. So these points are opposed with these typical points such as the one that we are given on F. The point F is given as seven, zero like this. So let's consider what we have this time. This time, if we consider this properly, we are going to see that the Y value is the one that is affected this time. Y is a zero. There's nothing there. There's nothing. About, about Y, there's nothing to consider about Y. There's nothing. But we are given X. So in this case, we are going to mark direct at x is equal to 7. We are going to mark direct at x is equal to 7 because we do not have anything to consider about y. So direct in the x-axis where x is what? A 7. There is no movement. x has moved 7 times going to the, to the right. x has moved 7 times. But y did not move. So many say this point will lie direct at the point where X is a seven. So this is our point F. So this is also a special point which lies direct in the X axis, just like what we saw to a point which lies direct 
in the y-axis. This is referred to as the x-intercept. So every point which lies in the y-axis is referred to as the x-intercept. So now if you talk of the straight lines later on, you shall be talking of the x-intercept, the y-intercept, two points uh, that you can use to draw a straight line from the dual intercept. You'll be talking of the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So you need to know that. So the x-intercept is a point which lies in the x-axis where in this x-axis, in the wall of this line, the wall of this line, which is our x-axis, in this line, y is equal to zero. Just like what we saw previously, in the y-axis, x is equal to zero. As long you are in this line, which is your y-axis, x is going to be equal to zero. So that is the consideration that you have. So that's the same thing, even on, on point H, on point H, you've got minus seven, zero like this. So we are given the value of X, but the value of Y, there's nothing. Y is a zero. So you mark direct to the point. You, there's nothing like X is like what we had before. When we are given X, it's a value X, where X is two, and we can, we can consider to say X is two, Y is three. They meet at a certain point. In this case, we do not have any movement which was taken by y. In this case, there is nothing. Y is a zero. So you mark direct at the point in the x-axis at minus seven. In this x-axis, where do we have a negative to the left side? So at minus seven, direct in the x-axis, you mark your point. So that is your point h. That's your point h. So this is how we can work out points that you use to draw lines. Maybe you are given this point and this point. Now you can join those points. Drawing lines, but all starts from knowing how to mark a given point, how to mark a point that you are given there. So I want us to consider as many examples as we can. Just try to go through, mark points, give yourself a task. Can you label points on a Cartesian plane? If even if you are given a point, are you able to give this point? What is the name of this point? Let's say you are given a point called Z. What? How are you going to name this point? So you just consider the point Z. You have to consider, remember the point is made of X followed by Y. X followed by Y. So you just consider at Z, what is the x value straight to z? Straight to z, what is the y value? So the x value corresponding to z is a 3. Remember x, then followed by y. At this z, the y value corresponding there is minus 2. So the point z is given as 3 minus 2. You can name a point, any point that is given. They can just give you a point like this. And this point is called y. Are you able to name this point? So you still consider the same concept. A point is supposed to be X versus Y. So what is the X value here? You consider, all right, what is the Y value corresponding to the point Y? So the X, as we saw, that is a six. X followed by Y. What is the Y value? The Y value is minus five. So that you have got a point X, Y. So what is the x value that you're given. The same even if a point is given in the x-axis, it's marked at point four. And you're given, maybe this is the point uh, F. Name the point that you're given there. So you must be able to name. Remember, we need x versus y. So the x value, we know it. That is the one that you are at that point. You are at what? X, which is four. What about the y value? Remember, in these all x axis y is equal to what y is equal to zero does not change as long you are in the x axis this point is minus three zero this point is minus two zero this point is minus one zero this point is one zero this point is two zero y is always equal to zero which is opposed when you are in the y axis X is the one which is always equal to zero. So if you name this point, uh, that is 
x first. Remember point, you start with x followed by y. So that's x at this point as the line or as the point lies in the y-axis. x is equal to what? x is equal to zero. But we are given that y is what? y is a one. So the point is zero, one. You move on to this point, x is zero there, but y is given, y is two. You move on to this point, y is three, but x is what? x is a zero like that. So meaning to say all these points, zero minus two, zero minus three, zero minus four like that, x is equal to zero in the what? In the y axis. As long you are in the y axis, x will be equal to, to a zero. As long you are in the x axis, y will be equal to a zero. So I want us to work out, uh, revise questions, typical questions, so that you do understand as we are going to move on working with our straight line graphs, that is how to draw our straight line graphs. How to draw straight line graphs using table of values, which is the table method, and also the dual method, which is the double intercept method. So that is what you're going to have in our next class.